Hello and welcome to the Houdini Online Classroom brought to you by 3dbuzz.com. My name is Jason Busby and I'll be your instructor throughout this class. And joining me, playing the role of student, is Mr. Terry Wilson. How's it going? Ah, it's going pretty good, Terry. First, let me start out by thanking you for participating in this class as a student, as well as um, all of the future abuse you will be taking as we go through the class. Well, yeah, that's pretty much why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's not really going to be that bad. But my goal is to make sure mm -hmm. that you truly do learn how to use Houdini. Now, this introductory video is in place to answer some of the more common questions that seem to crop up each time we offer an online class. So let's go ahead and get right to them. Very first thing, of course, is what exactly is the Houdini online classroom? Just in case you happen to have stumbled on this video on YouTube or on some other site, let me take just a moment and explain what the classroom is. First of all, if we go over to our website at 3dbuzz.com, if you take a look on the left-hand side in the sidebar, you'll find a classrooms section. Up underneath there, you will find the Houdini Fundamentals Classroom. Simply click on that, and that will take you in to the Houdini Online Classroom. Inside here, we've got three main areas that I'd like to spend just a second and talk about. The first, the section right over here, is where you will be able to find all of the video lectures that we release for this class. So we've got it divided into two different sections, video lessons and supplemental videos. Now, right now, we've got a series of videos up that go to um, everyone covering the winner of our first contest that mm -hmm. we offered in the classroom. And these videos break down how the particular student put together his asset for the contest. These videos are going to be moved here in the next day. You're going to find all contest videos located up under the supplemental video section. Mm -hmm. Up under video lessons, this is where you're going to find all of the lessons that pertain to the online class specifically. Okay. Now, we'll talk more about the contest videos in a few minutes. Moving over to the right-hand side, we have our instructor blog entries section. Not a lot in there at the moment for the simple fact that we've got the Houdini classroom set up, but we really hadn't had the time to start working on all of these different uh, video lectures. So now that we're starting to produce the lectures, keep an eye on this area right here. Anytime I find something that I feel is important to announce to the classroom, I'll put an entry in. Up underneath there, we have our forums. Very important. Okay, if you'd like to get in there and interact with other students or other Houdini users, this is the place to do it. If you have any questions or if you happen to see somebody asking a question that you're able to help out with, mm -hmm. go in there. Make yourself seen. Get involved. That is very important for the life of this classroom. Now, posting a question or a comment, answer, etc., very easy. Post a question or comment. Just hit that button. There you go. And if you're one of those people that like to see the forums in their traditional form layout, you can simply click on the Go to Classroom form. And if you do that, you'll see now we are looking at the Houdini form, the Houdini Online Classroom form, and just your standard vBulletin form layout. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's all I wanted to talk about at the moment for what the Houdini Online Classroom is. Let's go ahead and jump on to our next common question, and that is... Who can participate? Well, anyone, anyone that has an interest in learning the Houdini application, anyone who has a desire to well, perform complex technical tasks in a 3D yeah. world, anyone who's interested in modeling, animation, etc., and they're interested in doing it in the Houdini environment, this is the classroom for you. Now, this means that we are going to be focusing on elementary content to begin with. Right. That is very important to understand. We'll talk more about that in just a few minutes as well. But anyone can participate, but you may find that it's a little bit too simple if you happen to be a more advanced Houdini user. All you need is a computer, mm -hmm. and you need... Some free time. Well, possibly Houdini. You need some patience. You need Houdini, which fortunately for us, Side Effects of Software has released The Apprentice. They've been mm -hmm. doing that for years, so it's a free learning edition of the software. So simple enough. Okay, next thing I'd like to do is let's take a look at the classroom prerequisites. So what is required for you to participate? Well, a couple of things. One, you need a general understanding of 3D. And what I'm, what I'm talking about here is this. 
I'm not going to break things down into the most elementary forms, as in this is X and this is Y and this is Z and blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to do that. Right. Okay, so you do have to have some sort of basic understanding about the world of 3D, not 3D applications, but the world of 3D. Mm-hmm. I mean, you need to be familiar with an X axis, a Y axis, and a Z axis. Right. Also, basic math skills are going to be required. This is very important. Things such as 2 plus 2. Terry, answer. 4. Very good. Now, if I did something like 10 divided by 2. Answer, Terry. Uh, 5. Good. You're doing well so far. <laughs> but if we did something like 10 times. Let me make that look a little different. Yes. <laughs> 0.5. What's our answer? Uh, uh, 5. 5. Very good. So, yeah, there's going to be times where we're going to use one particular approach to a mathematical equation. And then we may turn right around and use a different approach, all depending on what we're setting up, how we're setting up, how we want readability to be presented, mm-hmm. etc. cetera. Basic understanding of math is important. So addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, um, things like absolutes, that's going to be important. We're going to start dealing with vectors in the near future. Okay. That will be important as well. When we start getting into some more complex math, I will put some video lectures in place to go over the approach that we're using to solve particular equations. Right. So don't stress out like you've got to run out and jump into a calculus class <laughs> tomorrow. It's not like that. But you do need to have your basic mathematics skills mm-hmm. kind of sharpened up for a, uh, a career in Houdini because, well, it's going to be required. All right. So that is our classroom prerequisites. Moving on from there, will there be any homework? Oh, this is a very simple answer. No. We've done a Houdini online classroom at 3D Buzz in the past, and that was its downfall. Basically, we had, I don't know, three – or four different Houdini assignments, homework assignments that were set up for each level of the classroom. Right. And we had somewhere between six and 7,000 participating Ooh. students since it is a free online classroom. So let's just say that only 50% of those students were turning assignments in. And of those 50%, let's say they turned in three assignments. Yeah. You can see where that would become a logistical nightmare quickly. And because of that, we just weren't able to get to everybody's homework quick enough because we are a business and we did have to focus on the creation of products. And as we were not able to get to everyone's assignments quick enough, and then, of course, students started to get right. really discouraged, drop out. And at that point, it just it became a, a real headache. So mm-hmm. we ended up closing the class down. This time around, there will not be any homework. Now, Students can go online and post their work. They can give themselves challenges. Mm -hmm. We will also be given challenges in the form of contests. Okay, this is very important. Why is this important? Well, I encourage every single student out there to participate in the contest that we put out because the winner's submission will be taken broken down, and then represented in video format that will then be freely put up in the Houdini Online Classroom. We've already had one contest just to hold everybody over while we were uh, waiting for an opportunity to start putting these video lectures together. Mm -hmm. And Peter Klaus did a fantastic job with a digital bridge asset. Yeah, set the bar pretty high for the contest. Yeah, he did. And, of course, we got the privilege of taking that asset, and Steve Twist Mm -hmm. broke it down, created some videos explaining exactly how he put everything everything together. And the neat thing about watching these videos is we do leave the realm of beginner content and we start talking about intermediate to advanced production. So good stuff. Get involved with the contest. But in regards to just outright, here's some homework. No, there will not be any homework in this class. Okay, moving on to the next thing I'd like to talk about is the version of Houdini that will be used throughout this course. We will be using version 9.1. At the moment, 9.1 is in a beta state. And with the software being in a beta state, let me point out that from time to time, strange things may happen. And depending on just how strange it is, I may keep it in the video. It might yeah. be one of those kind of crashes that doesn't actually take Houdini to its knees and, you know, make it go away and all. Right. Uh, something like that, I'll just simply click the button and be like, hmm, and keep working. Yeah. At the same time, if a temporal <laughs> opening happens and, you know, we can see into the future or something, well, at that point, I may just simply re-record the video <laughs> and things like that can happen. So it is beta. I'd like to point that out. For those of you that are following along with a beta application, please don't let it frustrate you when it crashes mm-hmm. or it's acting kind of slow at the moment. That's what beta software does. Yep. If it didn't do that, well, we wouldn't call it beta. That's okay? right. So 
If you are using 9.0, I would recommending, recommend excuse me, getting 9.1. And if you happen to be using any of the older versions like the World of 8, if you're using Houdini 8, you really need to move up to 9. Um, 9.1 would be best. 9.0, you could still follow along because between versions 8 or major versions 8 and 9, there has been a massive overhaul to Houdini in regards to the user interface, and this does change some of the ways that you work. Oh. So I would really like to encourage anyone who's still running Houdini 8 to move over to 9, at least for following along with this course. So is it that significantly different between 8 and 9? It's a huge difference. Oh, okay. It really is. And um, and because of that, I'd just like to make sure that everybody is in sync throughout this course. Gotcha. Okay, so the next thing to talk about is going to be our presentation style. What do I mean by presentation style? Well, what can you expect in these videos? A lot of people out there that create training videos have a single person mm -hmm. and they have a very rigid outline that they follow. Okay, now what we're going to do is come up to the menu bar. We're going to click on sphere. We're going to come down to the viewport and create a sphere. All right, we'll switch over to a component mode and we oh, will yeah. grab our vertices. With these vertices, <laughs> you get the idea, right? Yeah. That's not how we do things It's here. hard to follow those. It, it is. It's, sometimes it's hard to stay awake, and that's yeah. not knocking anyone's educational material that they've put out in a video format. That's just a fact. It's yeah, just, it's good material. Just Sometimes it's a little dry. Yeah. Our style for this course is going to be relatively loose, relaxed, and casual. Right. Three very important words. That doesn't mean that I'm going to come in here and tell you stories or jokes the entire <laughs> time. This will be very... Very important information that we're going to get across in regards to the fundamentals of Houdini. But we do not want to spend a lot of time off camera putting together structured lectures that take a lot of time when we could just be in here recording. That's right. We could just be in here showing you guys how stuff works. So, and again, there's going to be two of us. We'll always have an instructor and a student. This is very important to me. Um, a lot of people out there that take classes, you, you're probably familiar with this. You get into a classroom environment, you might be one of those shy kind of people. If not, I'm sure you're familiar with somebody in the class that is shy. Mm -hmm. And a, the instructor may have just presented something, and you might have that student sitting there scratching his head, but he's too shy to speak up. And, of course, you've got the student that likes to talk, and he's going to ask loads of questions, <laughs> and that's why we've got Terry here. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's our checks, checks and balances system because I can always look at Terry when I'm presenting something, and if Terry has that lost and confused look, <laughs> I can ask, Terry, you okay? And sometimes I might actually even quiz him on, all right, so what exactly did that just mean to you? And if Terry goes, butterflies, well, then he really wasn't paying attention or he is definitely <laughs> lost. At the same time, when Terry feels lost, he is highly encouraged in these videos to speak up and let me know, okay, I'm just not getting it. Can you present it in another way? And by having this check and balance system in place, the video should be able to help most anyone yeah. who's interested in learning Houdini. Because I found that I'll be asking questions that every single person watching the video will have. Absolutely, or at least a lot of people that well, are watching yeah, the video. Well, yeah, a lot of the people would. So yeah, that's very important that's stuff. But my it is job. So. <laughs> <laughs> it is a casual environment. You don't hear too many training videos out there that have laughing going yeah, on. That's in true. It. And with ours, of course, we do because once again, it's like casual conversation. All right, moving on to the next thing I'd like to talk about is going to be how often will the lecture be released. This really is up to the classroom itself, and here's what I mean by that. First of all, this is a free online class, so we do have products that we're working on. That's where our responsibilities lie because it is the income from those products that do two things. One, keep this company alive. Two, provide a financial backing for us to take the time to create free online mm -hmm. classrooms like the Houdini class here. So if we go into the classroom and it is just an empty saloon, right? Yeah. And you just hear crickets and maybe one of those uh, bar doors swinging back and forth <laughs> and that's it. Then do we really need to continue investing our time to produce for the classroom? Exactly. We really need to see participation. We need to see a bunch of people excited about learning Houdini going into this classroom each day. If we have four or five people, well, I can tell you this. We'll get the fundamentals out of the way, and that will pretty much be the end of it. At the same time, if we have hundreds of people or maybe even thousands of people, again, in the classroom, then we're going to be very excited about producing content for you guys, keeping the content flowing. So this is very important. It really is up to you, you being the student. So mm -hmm. do make an effort to go into the Houdini Online Classroom at 3D Buzz. Get involved. Start interacting with other people. We do see that, and that is very important, okay? We'll try to get the lecture out as quickly as possible, okay? 
moving right along from there, let's talk just a second about the old Houdini online classroom and the new one. So we're changing formats, the old versus the new. What do I mean by that? Well, in the old classroom, we provided more of the 3D Buzz traditional approach to explaining the application. And now that I've been working with Houdini for several years, I look back at that and I think, ah, you know, I wish I could do it differently if I did it again. Well, here I am doing it again. So I am going to take a different approach, which is going to provide a better foundation for those that are interested in learning the Houdini application. So let's spend just a second and talk about 3D applications. So here we are. We've got version X. That's going to be Maya. We've got version Y. That'll be 3ds Max. And we've got version Z. Uh, this guy will be XSI. All fantastic applications. Mm -hmm. Now, Terry, I know that you happen to have a little bit of skills in place for Maya, 3ds Max, and XSI. Yeah, well, n not only being a requirement for working on 3D Buzz, but also I did take some introductory, or matter of fact, the uh, intro classes that you taught yeah. uh, at the Renaissance Center for Maya and Max. XSI, I know that fairly well. I'm more of an editor than anything else. Right. So, uh, I know the basics of 3D, and I can model fairly well, and I you know know pretty much everything but you need to do. No with idea about Houdini, right? I have never touched Houdini ever, and that's perfect. That's really going to make things flow even nicer in this classroom. Because see, here's the deal: Houdini's kind of in a world all by itself, where with applications X, Y, and Z, let's go and throw a big H in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with applications X, Y, and Z, if you master one of these applications or even get relatively decent with them, you can fairly easily move over to another application and apply very similar skill sets to that application to produce the result you're looking for. Well, yeah, they basically all, ha all have the same principles. I mean, matter of fact, I think all three applications allow you to jump back and forth and change your keyboard setup, and they have it just a drop down. Yeah, pretty much. And now, in the world of Houdini, it's a bit different. All right, it's a lot different. Houdini offers a procedural environment for working. Everything that you do inside of Houdini is through some sort of procedural network. Mm -hmm. This is very important. You do not really have that over in applications X, Y, and Z. There are some procedural elements over in those applications, but in Houdini, everything is procedural, and that is very important here. So basically, people that are working in applications X, Y, and Z run into a giant brick wall when they take a look at Houdini, and then they quickly go, oh, well, this is too complicated, too confusing, and I'm just going to switch back over to my other applications. Well, my goal here is to basically take and break this wall down. Mm -hmm. Okay, If I break that wall down, everybody, everybody should be happy. Okay, And the way to break that wall down is not by presenting the course material in the standard, traditional way that I present introductions to all applications, which is starting out with an intro and then moving right over to the UI. Uh, yeah, that's typical. Yeah, that is that is typical with how we do things. But I'm not doing it that way this time around. With the Houdini Online Classroom, we're not even going to get to our first UI video until I believe it's video 14 or 15. Wow. Yeah, that's quite a ways down the road. This time around, I want to take things slower, and I want mm -hmm. to build a very solid foundation first so that when I start presenting the user interface, it's going to make sense because you have an understanding of this foundation that's, well, you really need to have a clear understanding of what's going on before the UI makes sense. I know that that in itself may sound kind of confusing. Well, no, I was just uh, so are the principles of the other you know major applications completely different I mean, from Houdini? You've got you model, uh -huh. you can animate, right. you can render. Okay, you got a compositor that you can use. I mean, yeah, you have all of those things, but the way you work ah. is radically different. And because of that, you need a very good understanding of procedural networks and procedural thinking. That's very important here. Gotcha. And I want to spend some time covering these things before we really jump into the application. And everybody that's new to Houdini is going to be very thankful when we get to that point because they'll have a much better understanding of what's going on as opposed to saying, all right, here's the introduction. Here's the user interface. Let's start building some networks. For some people, that works. But not for everyone. And we had a lot of people struggling with our past online classroom. This time around, I don't want to see anyone struggling. I want to see everybody getting it and understanding what's happening. So very important to understand. And another thing that we're going to do is also throw in a history of Houdini as well. And that's going to actually happen in the next video where we're going to talk about side effects history, basically the company itself and the application Houdini. Where did it come from? How long has it been around? 
then from there we're going to start talking about the different versions of Houdini, etc. So different style altogether than the first online classroom that we had. But in the end, I do believe this is going to be a very mm -hmm. rewarding approach to learning Houdini. Okay, so let's see what do we have next. So we're jumping over here to another layer. Oh yeah, the whiteboard <laughs> and Photoshop. I am a big fan of the whiteboard. I love drawing little things and networks and how these guys are going to talk to these guys and you got stuff over here and this guy going to talk to him and here's what's going very important to me, mm -hmm. okay? 99.9% .9 of my students love the whiteboard approach. There is that 1% out there that's thinking to themselves, you know, why didn't you just have these presented as pre-built lecture plates, if you will, mm -hmm. where you just simply turn on the plate and say, okay, look at this. All right, good. And then you talk for a second. Well, let me tell you now, you do have a fast forward button. You do have a track bar that you can slide to the right, jump right by. Drawing this stuff out is very important. When I'm in a real classroom environment and I'm teaching, I do a lot of drawing, okay, mm -hmm. a lot of whiteboard work. It's very important to get my thoughts that are in my head out to a whiteboard for everyone to see because then that helps make everything a bit clearer. Now, I'm going to do the exact same thing with the online class. That's very important to understand. So I might be writing something down, and as I'm writing something down, I might have students that are following along writing the same thing down. By doing it this way, it also gives me a chance. As I am writing, I am also thinking and when I am thinking, I might come up with other things to draw on the board as well. Right. So there really is an advantage to doing this. But I just want to remind that 1% out there that don't like the whiteboard to use that track bar to zip right by it because you can. That's okay? right. All right. So let's go ahead and get that off. And the next thing I want to talk about is advanced Houdini training. Since this class is being targeted towards an introductory crowd – Okay, those that have some intermediate to advanced level skills aren't going to find many of these lessons very useful. They'll find the contest videos very useful, but they're not going to find these introductory lessons very useful. Um, so just so that you know, we are working on some advanced Houdini training. This is part of the Houdini Technical Director Series. I believe at this point we've got four DVDs that are in the works. Mm -hmm. These products, once again, um, income from it helps to fund things like the online classroom. Um, again, the, they'll be released to the general public at a very respectable price. Not going to have anything that's expensive. We've always done a good job with that at 3D Buzz. And uh, we encourage those of you that are wanting to push your education to the next step, take a look at these DVDs when they come out and expect to see the first one uh, actually showing up here very soon, the next couple of weeks. So advanced Houdini training, it's coming your way. All right, next thing I'd like to spend just a second and talk about is going to be additional resources and communities. Another very important thing. You can never have too many resources when you're That's learning right. something. And communities, communities are always good. Of course, we love everybody that hangs out at 3D Buzz all the time. I yeah. love seeing the website thrive. But there are a couple of other excellent Houdini communi communities that I would like to point out so that mm -hmm. you've, you, know, you can take advantage of all the really good ones out there. So outside of the 3D Buzz Houdini Online Classroom, we also have – the Side Effects website. Side Effects website has some very nice things to offer to those that are learning Houdini and, of course, for Houdini users. First and foremost, up under the community section, we do have the Houdini forums. You can go up under there. You'll find a lot of people interacting with one another. We also have the Houdini Exchange, which is an online database of Houdini assets that are created by Houdini users that are sharing their asset with anyone who's interested in checking them yeah. out. Download some of these things. Oh, Check yeah. them out. There's a lot of educational value in looking at somebody else's work. And, of course, they've got a very cool gallery as oh, well. That, yeah, that's of course. <laughs> so this is the Houdini website, very important website. Make sure you bookmark it. Also, oh, and let me do point out, that's side, sidefx.com. That's okay? right. And then moving on over, we have oddforce.net, another excellent website. has a fantastic forums section and also, a very nice Houdini wiki. Oh, cool. So, again, another very, very nice resource. They also have a gallery. So for those of you that like to get out there and take a look at some amazing artwork done by Houdini mm -hmm. artists, great place to go. So two excellent websites. Make sure that you check them out if you have never checked them out in the past. All right, so let's go ahead and jump back over here. Terry, I believe that's pretty much everything that I wanted to talk about in the introduction to the Houdini online classroom. Mm -hmm. So with that... It's time for us to get started. So let's go ahead and move on to the history of Houdini.